What's up guys? Welcome to my Cathedral of Eternal Light Mythic Plus Tips and Tricks video. Now in this video I do want to go over and I will be going over just things like trash counts, pools, pathing, skips, tricks, mechanics and so on and just kind of notes on affixes. Now I won't be going over everything because one I don't know everything and two there's not enough time in this video so if you do have any tips, tricks or suggestions of your own feel free to leave those in the comments below. Now when you start this dungeon you'll see we pull two ads or two ads kind of hop up here and you can pull this other pack to the right, which my group decided we wanted to pull. And again, if you're if the fixes are difficult or the level's too high, you can pull them separately and be safer if you like. Now, one mob in here is called a Soul Mendo, and it does do a cast, a heal called Demonic Mending, which you can interrupt or CC and so on. And of course, they do some a or just straight damage as well with Fell Bolt. Invaders do something called fell strike and you can see the straight lines of green there and you just want to strafe out of those so move side to side like left or right just to make sure you don't get hit by that and you can dodge that even if you're right in their face so as soon as you see that they're casting it on you make sure you start moving so you can dodge it now the destroyers these fell guards with the shields they do the shadow whale and you can interrupt that it's just an aoe around them or you can just move out of it knockbacks don't seem to work while they're channeling it though so just be aware of that as you can see i try to knock this guy back and it doesn't quite work so just move out of it instead now there is a mini boss that does come after you move far enough and there's also a pat that comes to the right here which is why i pulled these back because i didn't want to engage the, the patrol by accident and so once you finish this off you see the mini boss over there he's actually fighting and I turn the camera here so you can see him over there and you can pull him manually with the ranged ability without pulling the extra trash but you can also pull him just by moving about here past this pillar you see he does something I'm coming for you little yell and you can pull him that way but just try not to pull the, the trash over there is completely unnecessary and not something you want to do now the shadow wave is his main ability and it just does a big AOE cone and you don't want to get hit by it. As you see, the mage almost died, and generally you will if it's on a high level. Be closer to him if you can, because it's a cone, it is wider as it goes out, and it's harder to dodge. So it's best even as ranged healers to kind of be close to him. Now, I told the group here, be careful about the patrol, because... If you're fighting him and you accidentally pull that on, say, like a ball stream leak or a, like any sort of weird effects fix like that, necrotic perhaps, then it can be a bit of a pain. Now, this pack has Fellbringer and some dogs here, these little fell stalker puppy things. And a lot of these will jump and do an AoE silence, the dogs. The Fellbringers can spawn these green areas, which give you extra haste, but do a little bit of damage. And they also do a swipe in front of them, so frontal cleave. But you can dodge it even as a tank. And as melee, you should just kind of be aware of it and not stand in front of them as much as possible. But it's completely dodgeable by everyone. I do like standing in the green circle. It really doesn't do that much damage and it's worth the extra haste it gives you. And try to keep the ads out of it as a tank because it's important that the ads don't get that buff. So this pack, and a lot of these packs, just as you may have noticed, will be bigger than they are normally because this is a teaming week when I took this video. Now, this Dread Hunter does fly around and sometimes out of the combat area, and then he'll eventually fly in. He does a Dread Scream. You want to interrupt it. It's an AoE fear, and it really sucks. Just make sure you interrupt it, and watch out for his frontal cleave. You just do a Shadow Swipe or Strike, I believe, but it knocks you back. So just don't point it at your group, and of course, as a DPS or healer, don't be in front of it. Now, I would prioritize killing him first, because the fear, again, really, really bad. But the rest of the ads are just kind of the same we've already seen. So you've got invaders that are doing the fell strike, you've got destroyers doing the shadow whale, and so on. Now up here, we get some more bat ads. Now these are different. These are, do not do the fear, and I believe the one that we killed is the only one that does that you normally pull anyway. But these do do the shadow swipe here. So again, face them away from the group, don't stand in front of them and just kind of be aware of that the knockback don't get knocked into the next pack of trash for example now this pack i choose generally to line of sighted because there is a patrol that does go from all the way to another pack at the end of the hallway to down here so unless you want to pull them together which you can do of course if you have the ability to if your group's strong enough and so on and so forth then go ahead and do that but again more of the same as Fellbringers, invaders and one soul mender take advantage of the bubble my group didn't really do that i think they were scared they thought the damage was too high just be aware that you want to dodge stuff maybe sanguine right if they die in the bubble or close to the bubble be careful about that dodge fell strikes again very possible in melee but you just have to be on top of it just be aware that it's happening and potentially happening to you so after this there's the patrol and obviously this is teaming so there's a lot of them but there's not normally quite this big a pack 
we got more of these fell puppies and this fell bringer who spawns the green area and also does the devastating swipe that cleave in front of him again you see them jump do that aoe silence if you get hit like the mage does here you just get silenced take a bit of damage but generally just kind of move away from it very simple pack here so just finish this pack up make sure you point the cleave away and just stay out of it in general this devastating swipe it's just extra damage you don't need and please do try to take advantage of the green zone there it's really useful and just helps you do lots of damage and clear out stuff faster now this next pack and just note that the patrol does go all the way back to this pack so you might have to wait a bit if you don't want to pull them together has again more of the same ads you've got defenders you've got this like wrath god thing and soul menders and so on so just dodge all the mechanics handle the heals interrupts the shadow whales and so on it's kind of everything you've encountered up to this point all at once take advantage of the bubble and so on and just dodge fell strikes now for fixes like necrotic like this video was recorded in you want to make sure you do kites and this is the all these packs tend to be fairly large even without teaming so you kind of want to make sure that you you know kite when you can you see the hunter helped out with the binding shot any slows knockbacks and so on can help and then take advantage of the mechanics so take advantage of those green bubbles and just while dodging other mechanics do note that the bean in the green can make things like devastating swipe kind of hard to see unless you're looking at the cast time so just be careful about that now up here we've got a pack of three the temptress is the new one it's got an Illyrian aroma cast you want to interrupt i believe it does some form of mind control i don't normally let it go off though so i haven't really seen what it does too too often now i do tend to move them either into this room as you see here just to give you more room to fight and dodge fell strike and the devastating swipe or you can pull them down the stairs i tend not to like to take them on the stairs though because it really sucks for line of sight and your healer probably won't like that very much so just finish them off and then move along now on when it fix like sanguine or volcanic or really sanguine like you don't want to kill them on the stairs just watch the stairs are very clustered like you don't have a lot of room to maneuver so any effects like that can be kind of nasty here i like to skip the trash you can see see the walker over there just make sure it doesn't cross and you can just as you see jump over the flower beds to skip that pack on the left now in this pack there's a couple of important mobs and i'll go over them the botanist is the one i like to kill first interrupt blistering rain and his fell rejuvenation blistering rain hurts the most so it's the most important to interrupt and the strangle vine lasher strangle vine excuse me lasher actually does a thing where it kind of grips something and you can either run away from it to break that vine or you can cc it stun it knock it back whatever to interrupt its cast either way these choking vines you see it's casting here you can either move away and break it or just cc it now there is a pat normally it's just the temptress like one temptress on teaming as you can see it's three so you see the botanist in this teaming week and then two temptresses so just try to interrupt as much as you can blistering rain again being of the most important right here because it hurts so much he also again does do a fell rejuvenation i don't know what type of heal it is as i don't really let them live generally that long but it's good to interrupt that too after this there's another pack here with the botanist and some flowers and there were some formulating flowers which i'll mention now the formulating ones which aren't in this pack but you may have seen earlier they fix it on someone and they try to explode on them if they reach them they explode so you either if you're fixated say as a tank or a melee with a huge cooldown you can just let them blow up on you with a cooldown and you won't die or just kill them and kite them before they reach people more of the same here in this pack we're just stopping the strangle vine lasher on his choking vines interrupting the botanist and so on now in this room you can kind of pull as many as you're comfortable with depending on the fixes depending on how comfortable you are and so on but just be aware of course anything like bursting for example or bolstering you probably don't want to pull more than one pack and just be aware of the pat because that alluring aroma is also important to interrupt and you don't want to accidentally miss that if you pull her with another pack of trash so in the pack with just a couple of exploding flowers as well as the strangle vines and then here's the tree that we skipped earlier pretty simply does lumbering crash you can interrupt it with cc and incapacitate works disorient stun knock back pretty much anything grips so just stop that in valerie you'll see behind me there's some green circles stay out of them very simple now for the first boss here it's a good one to hero or lust on in general and kind of burn him down what he does mainly is he will summon ads behind you 
And he also does some tank stuff. So tank stuff is pretty simple. He does this timber smash, just have active mitigation up for it. And he does a breath as well. Now when he summons the adds, they are fulminating. These are the exploding flowers. So you want to slow them, kill them, kite them, make sure they don't reach people, and they can target even the tank. As you can see, my team's back there kind of destroying them with the slows and just, just kind of bursting them down. Now there's also the succulent lasher that did spawn during that time for the tank to pick up for melee. Just be aware, it does do an AOE occasionally. So don't be too close to it or kill it really fast if you can. There's this breath that doesn't seem to have a name. And then Timber Smash, and that's pretty much the whole boss fight. So you go between boss time, like right now, to the succulent, or excuse me, not the succulent, but the formulating lashes, and then the succulent one as well. There's also choking vines. You don't see it because there's a tank perspective, but it will pull somebody to them, like to this vine, kind of like the strangle vine lashes did, but there's no add. So you have to just run away from it. If you get pulled back there, make sure that you actually just run away from it. So make sure that you break it, use a speed boost, whatever you need to. It does do damage as it pulls you, so it's very important that you don't let it kind of take your health away. Now, as you know, on Necrotic Weeks, it's kind of rough to reset on this boss. I get very lucky. I try to cut him a couple times. I just get lucky here with a bunch of dodges, I suppose. But generally, having a DPS that can taunt off you, or just anyone who can taunt off you for a little bit, would be really helpful in higher communication groups. So if you're like in some sort of voice with each other, it'd be quite nice. Plus the whole first boss, it can be kind of rough on Tyrannical on higher keys. There's a lot of damage going out. There's a ticking dot that does stack. As you can see on our frames, we have five stacks. It does go up to that. And just lots of damage going out, especially if you don't handle the exploding flowers appropriately. Now, after the first boss, you're going to go across this bridge and there's some trash packs that do pat in your way but you can skip them so on the left there's a tree and a flower and you can just root the tree and it'll stop them or you can cc the tree and it'll stop them and then on the right there's just a tree and some flowers and a temptress you can skip all of that just jump over the corners you see here and then just run up the stairs note on sanguine weeks those as that the npcs kill do leave sanguine panels so just be aware of that up here, because we skipped all the trash, now if you do skip both before the bridge and after, you do need some extra trash, I believe. So, I do tend to pull one full side of these imps. Normally, there are two imps that do pat from left to right, and you can just pull those and skip the rest of them. If you do pull the other trash, and these imps simply do a fell bolt cast. It just hurts quite a bit, puts a little dot. Pretty simple mechanically, though. You do not need to pull both sides, even if you're trying to make up trash count in general. Now in this room there's a bunch of trash and a bunch of packs and you can pull as many or as few at a time as you like and in whatever order. The only thing I will say is the mini boss, the floating eyeball, will spawn the boss when he dies. So make sure you kill him last or be prepared for the boss to be landing if you want to pull him with the other packs. This pack I pulled here is just a bunch of imps, so the same thing we just did essentially. Now this next pack is going to have some, this pack goes around the middle of the circle and it has scavengers and imps. Now the scavengers summon different kinds of books. You can interrupt the cast itself with CC, or you can just kill the books. The arcane books have the most health. They summon an ad if they are not killed, and the ad is quite nasty, so generally try to kill them before it actually spawns. They also do things like frost tomes, which I think stun you if you're too close. Everlasting silence, which will put an area of effect silence on the ground. So you just kill it, but they have very low health. So handle the books however you need to, whether you're stopping the cast initially or not, and or killing the books after they're spawned. One note I would say is perhaps on things like Explosive Week, it'd be good to stop the book cast entirely because, you know, while you're looking for explosives, you're also worried about then, you know, books spawning and doing nasty things to you. So just something you can hopefully do. It's always better to you know prevent having to deal with these books at all, if you can, but they're not too hard to kill. So we pull this last pack again, just more scavengers, more imps. All the same mechanics here. End up dying because of necrotic. But that's pretty much it for the trash in this room. Now, the mini boss has a few mechanics. He's fairly simple though. The first is a fell glare, I believe it's called. And it's just a swirl on the ground you'll see very quickly here. So I fell a glare here, you just see that little AoE on the ground, just stay out of it, very simple. The other one will be a blinding glare, which you just turn away from. So when he finishes the cast here, you want to turn away, turn your back to him, 
And the last one is this focus destruction, which just does AoE damage. Now, please note if you have Sanguine that week, try not to kill him in the boss area, which is anywhere in this circle. This is a kind of large circle here. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter. But once he dies, the boss will spawn, and then he'll be immune for a bit, and then you can pull him. Now, for the second boss, he's pretty simple mechanically. He's got an AoE around him that you want to dodge, just run out of it, and then he'll throw his little axe cudgel whatever the hell that thing is and it'll spin around the outside of the room and you want to make sure that you're in closer to the boss so you don't get hit so here's the first aoe around him now you see where the hunter is standing on the left side of my screen if he stays there which he won't he does move out of it he'd actually get hit by this next ability so it does kind of cut into the circle a bit so be aware of that so this aoe you want to move in for so that you don't get hit now the last thing he'll do is the scornful gaze where he'll fixate someone and he'll charge them and you want to hide behind a bookshelf now that way you'll hit the bookshelf not your person don't be in his way as he charges and then he'll spawn some books it's important that you interrupt these books stun these books kill these books as, like, as soon as possible because they do all sorts of nasty effects they do a big slow sometimes which can make it hard to run out of that aoe he just did sometimes they'll mind control you just do damage it's just really nasty and that's it for his mechanics now one thing you can do about the scornful gaze is you can actually immunity the charge. Now, if you do immunity the charge, like if you use an ice block, divine shield, and so on, make sure that you're not too close to the bookcases because if you are too close to it, you can actually still break the bookcase even if you took the hit. So just be sure you like be close to him generally, like just like walk up to him, pop the immunity. But you can do that to kind of lengthen the fight. If you're on a high tyrannical, he's got a lot of health. You don't want to lose all your bookshelves because it's kind of a soft and rage. If the bookshelves are all gone, he starts charging, people start dying. So just something you can do to prevent the books as well and not have to deal with those even on lower keys or non-tyrannical weeks. Now, as you can see, this next pack, there's a bunch of trash, but only a few actually stay. So generally, you don't want to stun them. But I mean, it doesn't really matter. You don't want to stun like before the other trash runs away. But it's all the same imps and scavengers. Now, there's a bit of a miscommunication here, so you'll probably see me get in trouble and die a few times here. But... There's uh, something we'll be doing with the mini boss here that you can do, and I'll go over that once we actually get to it. Now, up here on the stairs, these two packs of necrotic spiderlings. Generally, you don't have to pull them, even for accounts, but people tend to pull them quite a bit. So I like to kind of get them out of the way anyway. They put a poison on you, as you can see. Now, here, in this communication, they thought I have said to stay down there, but I mean, like, I said, well, no, we got trash. Like, oh, well, you know, we have to. Uh, actually kill the trash first but basically you can pull those if you want to be safe or if everyone's very careful you can manage to not pull them but they do kind of move around on left and right sides and they are they do have a dispellable dot that is i believe poison not magic so not all healers can do it now up here there's two different ads there's an enforcer a pair of enforcers and then there's the orb caster in the middle now the teaming as you can see there are two orb casters normally there's just one that pats now, they, the casters and will do Burning Strand, which is a root, which you can interrupt, and they also do this Fell Blaze Orb, which spawns a green ball, and then will spin off in a direction. You just want to dodge that and avoid it. There is supposed to be a way you can kind of bug it out sometimes by tanking them near the edge. I never quite figured it out, plus they seem to be kind of random which direction they went, so I wouldn't count on that too much. Now here, someone does pull some Necrotic spider lanes from the other side. As I say, people do tend to pull them quite a bit for whatever reason. One thing about the enforcers, just make sure that you don't point them at the group. And as a melee, just don't let them kind of be close to you because they do the serrated cleave, as you can see, which is the frontal cone. So make sure you don't kill the group and make sure the group doesn't die to that. And I believe I'd die again here or get close to. But again, just finish up the trash as best you can here. And then once that happens, we'll get to the mini boss. I think I have a bit of lag here. I release and it doesn't spawn me immediately. But this is the point at which I like to pull the mini balls downstairs, especially on weeks like necrotic or explosive, things like that, bursting, bolstering, even sanguine, anything like that. And the reason is during this fight, she will spawn new ads, so these necrotic spiderlings. And these ones will always come with her, the first ones. But if you run down far enough, then sh the ones that she spawns, the ads she spawns, will not actually come down to fight you. And you can pull them later. Now, she does do a vanish. As you can see, she teleports to someone. Try not to be in the next boss's room because she can reset in there. She doesn't always, but she can. And 
here's the spider cult which is what will spawn more ads and just kill her down here when she does vanish she will leave like spider webs somewhere and which will slow people and then does this frontal cleave attack which you do want to dodge if possible it's a little hard down here it's good to have the group actually fairly near her so that she doesn't port like somewhere random and really far but she will also port to somebody i believe so i think it's better to have people close to her now you see here she does put all this kind of root on the ground but generally try to be a little more a little closer to her rather than being far away so that you don't kind of screw the group over there but this way you can skip ads you don't have to do this it's not like the only way and the best way it's just certain effects that it can help especially if you're on a higher fortified key for example and i don't know where this spiderling came from or where it pulled from but i believe it's one of the ones she summons and then you can see the rest of them that she summoned as well that we didn't have to deal with those five extra ads that could have been in this case stacking necrotic the whole time which has made it a really hard pull so some advantages to doing it that way again for these just make sure you just someone's dispelling the poison if you can some dps and some you know tanks and non-healers do have a dispel for poison so don't forget that just check your spell books you know make sure can i cleanse this off because it does help a lot because it does hurt Now, as far as trash count goes, there's one more pack of trash after this, and basically they're worth about 4.76%, and I get stuck here, I don't know what I was looking at, I was just distracted probably, who knows, but they're worth 7 or 4.76%, which means you need to have 95.24% trash at this point if you don't want to pull any extra trash, so just be aware of that and kind of keep track of that. In here, we pulled extra trash, the Necrotic Spider Lane, so we're, of course, done already. But just things to keep in mind. Now, for this third boss, there's going to be portals that spawn at 90% and then 50% after. And I like to split up the DPS. So, two DPS to one side and then the tank, plus another DPS on the other side. Now, they spawn on the left and the right side each time. And facing the boss the way we're facing right now, the first portals will be behind us. And you kind of see where they are. And then the next two portals will be in front of us. So as a tank, I like to pull the boss to the first portal to where it's going to be because he spawns very quickly, 90% health. And so on, it's a good boss to lust on as well. If you're having trouble with the mechanics, you can wait the 50% to lust because it kind of where things go to shit. But you can also just lust at the start. Now, these the little guardians there are important to kill. Those are the ones channeling because those are the ones that will kind of do a burst of AoE if they finish channeling, plus they summon more adds. As a tank, make sure you pick up the adds no matter what side they're on. The small ones, like so in this case, imps that spawn from these first portals and later the Shavara, the mistresses. Now, chaotic energy, as you see here, you get to the little shield in here, wait till the last second or two, dip in, let it hit, and then dip out. Because you don't, it does shrink as you stand in there, so don't park yourself in there. Now, here I move again next to the next area, which will spawn at 50% for the portals. And there's a fell soul cleave, by the way, that he does do. You can dodge it even as the tank, so just make sure you're moving away from it. So in this case, we have these Hellblade Mistresses, and they do do a knockback, so it's important that you don't actually get knocked out of the shield when they do Chaotic Energy. But same principle here. Kill the adds, kill the, the Portal Guardians, finish them before they do the Approaching Doom, get into the shield here. Now in this case, our hunter is really good, and he drops a Binding Shot, and just kind of stuns them so they don't actually get to us and accidentally knock us out, which can definitely happen, so be careful about that. Dodge the cleave, of course. And in this case, I'm trying to kite a bit because of necrotic. Now, once you're done with that, he doesn't do anything else special. So it's just very easy from here on out. Just dodge the cleave, watch the chaotic energy, and you know, get into the shield. Now, it used to disappear if you stood in it too long. I have heard that it doesn't anymore, but I haven't confirmed because I've never gotten to that point. So it might disappear, and if it does, you're kind of shut out of luck, pop immunities, I guess. But yeah, just be aware of that. Now, normally I do like to mark where the portals are. I didn't this time because we were kind of pushing for time a bit here. But it's just important you split the group up and kind of tank them near the ads. One thing to note too for melee, if you have melee in your group assigned to the tank ad or the, the side that the tank's on, be careful where you point the Felsol Cleave because you don't want to kill the melee while he's trying to DPS the ad. Very unfortunate if that happened. Now here you can pick up the shields. It doesn't really matter if you do yet though. There are four dread wings. This is where you get the extra percent, the 4.76% that I was talking about earlier. I think it might actually be more on non-teaming weeks, but I haven't really like looked at it too too much outside of this. So in this case they're 1.19. Just 
know that there is some percent left that you can gain by fighting these two. They just do the swipe, shadow swipe, dodge the fellow swirlies on the ground from the other bats and just finish these four up. Remember that if you have Sanguine that you want to kill these outside of the room so that you don't spawn a bunch of Sanguine and accidentally heal the boss. Last boss is pretty simple mechanically. He's got two phases. And if you didn't last on the third boss, then make sure you last after phase two on this guy, unless you can kill him in one phase, like on a, a super low key for you. His first ability is Demonic Upheaval, as you can see here. He puts a debuff on two people. You want to move this away from the group. It drops a circle, as you'll see in a couple seconds. There they are. And then out of the, you want to move out of that because they explode. So don't put them near the melee if possible. And then, you know, get away from them. Now, Carry and Swarm is just a tank ability. It will follow the tank, so you can't dodge it as a tank. But don't point out the melee. Basically, keep it on the edge of the room, and it leaves crap on the ground. So be sure to move him out of that. You can pop a cool in if you need to for that. Dark Solitude, just an AoE ability. And as a tank, generally, you'll be picking up the shield before the fight starts. Kind of like on Holes of Valor. And you'll be using that in Phase 2. Now, Shadow Fate is the ability that moves him into Phase 2. And here it is. And basically, your DPS's role is to kill the adds and dodge the balls and swirlies. And as the person with the shield, generally the tank, you just want to move around and block these balls from hitting the Illidan. Now, see Illidan's energy bar on the right side of the screen above the Cathedral of Eternal Night, Tax, and the timer. And once that reaches 100, you move out of Phase 2. Now, the DPS can soak these balls and healers as well with immunities, especially and such, but there's quite a bit of AoE damage going out. And it's actually better, I feel, at least, for the DPS to just be killing the ads because you can see they decide to try to like soak a bunch for whatever reason. I'm not sure why they decided to. And it's starting to get kind of hard to block all of these as, you know, there are so many, eventually you can't catch them all and you run out of immunities and so on. So generally just kill them. One note, try to stay on the inside, especially for range of the circle. Don't be like out on the edges where the ads are. Because even though it's easy to dodge the balls, the the bats that are like spitting these little fell things, they hit immediately almost on the outsides, but on the inside you have a second or two to react to them and move out of them and dodge them. So I think it's safer and better generally to kind of be away from those, unless of course melee have to be up there, so just be extra careful. And then you go back to phase one once you reach 100% on Illidan, and same mechanics. Rinse and repeat and kill the boss. Now, that's when you would last if you choose to last on this boss or hero on it instead of on the third boss, but totally up to you and your group. So you just again do the mechanics. Eventually, he will go into Shadow Fade again if he lasts long enough, so try to burn him down before that. But if not, you know, be prepared to handle Shadow Fade again. Other good lust points are actually in Phase 2 itself. It used to do so much AoE damage, it's been nerfed quite significantly since it first released, but if you're having trouble keeping up with it, with the healing or killing the ads and so on, then it could be worth using heroism or bloodlust in that phase. So that's pretty much it for this video as we finish up the boss here. So I hope you guys liked it. I hope you found it informative and useful. And if you have any, again, comments or suggestions or tips and tricks of your own or pathings that I didn't mention in here, feel free to leave those in the comments below or ask any questions you have there as well. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Cheers.